what's going on guys i got an important announcement to make before the video starts so i gotta let you guys know that i got hacked someone took over the facebook page so gr trucking and demolition the facebook page i am not the one active on it someone took over it i'm guessing they changed the email the password and they're the ones posting so if you can report that page if you can do that for me please don't fall for no messages don't click no links i'm pretty sure they're going to try to scam the 44,000 followers that are on there and like i said i'm not sure how it happened a week or two before somebody had made a uh, a fake profile so uh, i reported that and i've been getting a lot of links and stuff i didn't click none of that i'm not sure how it happened also my instagram page it got deactivated earlier in the morning i got on there to see what was new the messages and it said it was deactivated and i can't get back on it no more same thing i'm guessing they changed the email the password so if there's a uh, a page out there that you guys see that same page i was using if they activate it again that means that somebody else is using it i will uh, let you guys know in a future video if i make a new page and what i'll be using but right now i don't want to mess with that i just want to make sure that nobody gets scammed and that uh they don't take advantage of you guys so please if you have facebook go to the page gr trucking and demolition you'll see the the videos there most of the videos that i posted my truck my dad's truck report that page and so you guys can see that i'm not lying i want to show you guys show you guys this right here luckily i had another facebook account i logged into and i was able to search my page and it showed up because it was not popping up earlier so as y'all can see here the page is active they shared this picture which i didn't do and i mean everything here is pretty much everything i've posted and it sucks guys it really really sucks it's taken me years to build my audience and just for for somebody to come and do something like this you know it's not it's not cool and let me see admin info earlier i had checked right here where the page was being uh, ran from because you can check that and where is it right here page manager location is Pakistan so a fucking Pakistanian took over my shit and man I'm pissed I'm pissed off this is fucked up my phone number still there like I said guys please don't fall for no scams if y'all can report the page report it because you know if if some of you guys click on links uh, start putting your credit card info this or that it's gonna look like I'm the one scamming you, but I'm not. You know, the page got taken over, like I said. So if y'all can do that for me, report the page. What's going on, guys? Back with another video. And today we're gonna be hauling a 323 CAD excavator. But first I wanna show y'all what I did to the low boy. Like you guys remember a few videos ago, I had painted the side of the trailer with some spray paint, put the new reflectors. But guess what? That was not it. I actually did something way better to the trailer and made it look way way nicer than what i did uh two videos ago so go ahead and check it out let me know what y'all think the entire trailer got painted and it got painted the right way with some industrial paint with that air compressor spray gun and just look at how it looks the whole top got painted i just didn't do the middle right here and this edges because those are uh, those get scratched up pretty much whenever i load and unload equipment but i mean just look at the difference in the paint it looked all right with the with the spray paint what i had done on that previous video but this here is just quality it's way better than what i had done and also the reflective stickers i don't know if y'all remember i had left them longer well i just decided to do white and red I did them shorter and I think it looks way better too. It's more simple. It's more simple and clean. 
And here's the neck. I just did four uh, reflective tapes. One, two, three, or four. Now, the reason why I decided to paint the entire trailer was because I had told the neighbor, hey, can you paint the neck of the low boy with your gun? Because he's a welder and I've seen him paint uh, fences that he uh, puts together for properties or shops. And he said, all right, I can do it. He did the neck and I wasn't here. When I came back, I was like, oh my gosh, that looks so good. Gloss finish, the paint's quality. I was like, dude, you need to do the entire trailer. Do the entire trailer. Next day I came, we pressure washed the, the trailer and he started painting the trailer and it came out amazing. And I'm glad I did it because the trailer looks way, way nicer now. Like y'all can see. I really, really like it. Another thing, I also went to the Chrome Stop and I got all new lights for the low boy. Every single light is new. Right here in the corner, I got these watermelons. Red watermelon lights. I love these lights. Here's a reflective tape. And just look how it looks from the back too. I actually decided to put a longer reflective tape right there in the middle. And then a longer piece on the sides. All of these lights are trucks. Clear. All of them are clear. Obviously, all of this got painted too. Wheel wells. Load boy is dirty because I've been uh, working a lot. I've had a lot of loads. Thank God. But this was done last week. So I've been running the low boy the entire week. Check it out. The inside right there. Change this light also right here. And the trailer didn't have watermelons in the front, but I put some watermelons right here in the corner. Also put these lights in the front, which it didn't have. And I've been loading and unloading excavators. I've already picked up a loader dozer and they haven't broken i thought they uh, probably could have break whenever the tracks would get on the trailer but so far they're good they haven't broken so that means it's at a good clearance look at that watermelon light just look at the neck of the trailer all of it got hit except inside of there where you really can't see it but all of this got some of that gloss paint i also did a load with this uh flatbed this week i hauled 40 foot rebar that was something different i had never done that so that's pretty cool i'm gonna post a picture on the screen so y'all can see and i was gonna do a video of that i want to do videos of a lot of stuff i've been doing this week but i've just been so busy People keep on calling me, hey, I need to move this, I need to move that. I did five loads yesterday. So I ran all day from like four in the morning to 7 p.m. I was just tired. I got this 323 I gotta move right now and then uh, have to move our excavator, the 316. I'm gonna disconnect the low boy. Gotta drop my bags. There's some boards right here that I'm gonna run over so I don't break the curb. I gotta drop the bags on the low boy too. And I gotta put this axle down. the binders I'm gonna use for that excavator get these out chain for the boom
Open up the valves. Good to go. And now, just drop the neck. You can see this pin already cleared the hood. Now what I'm gonna do, lower the gear that's gonna hold the neck. So when I pull forward, it does not drop. Cat key. Let's go get that track out. I'm gonna leave the pony motor on. I'll probably come back and get this uh, D5 dozer. Now let me give you a little hint, the tip. Y'all can't see it from here, but something I do every time before loading, I like for the, the motor that makes the tracks run, you either have them on one end or the other. I like to put those motors facing the back because it adds a little more weight to the machine. So I prefer that to be towards the back.
and this is a 323 if i'm not mistaken it might weigh around 58,000 pounds it's a little bit heavier than the 320 it's actually very similar to it same body i think it's the same track size Now I'm gonna clean some of this uh, dirt that's on the tracks off. Don't think I'm just gonna run it like that. That's it. Shut it off. Leave the key in there because I gotta unload it. Close the door. Right, as y'all can see right there the boom sitting on the trailer you always want to make sure that's sitting on the trailer because if not this train here that's going to go over it can get loose now before i start chaining i'm going to go ahead and Hook my truck up that way if the trailer is gonna flex at all it flexes uh with the truck hooked up and the air airbags up because believe it or not these trailers do get a little bit of flex on them once you put some weight on the deck Drop my bags, line it up. Easy as that. setting most of the time that's how high i'll go if i got a load that's pretty tall i'll drop it at three or two but the first level is pretty low the trailer is literally about two three inches from the ground that's why i don't like to be that low trailer scrapes everywhere That's it. Hook up my airlines. I'm gonna air up the bags on the truck now. And also, air up the trailer. Like I was saying earlier, this is the, the motor to the tracks. I always like to have it facing backwards. Three twenty-three F. Now let me tell you something too on these excavators. You have different series models of excavators. For example, there's a 
323, there's a 323F, 323FL, or they just have uh, a letter next to the number and that can make a big difference on the weight of the machine. So I always like to make sure that I know what machine I'm picking up, if it's gonna be an F, a EL. There's a lot of Caterpillar 320s that are just 320s and then there's 320s ELs. They have a little more features, a little bit heavier. So there's uh, all kinds of, of models. No, I use this one here to clean up wherever the binder is going to go. Man, there's some heavy mud right there. I'm gonna add four binders just like that to the four corners of the excavator. And then obviously the chain right here that goes on the boom. And that's pretty much it for securement on, on these excavators. And this excavator here is actually the biggest excavator I would do with just those four tie downs. If I was to do anything bigger, like a 330, 336, and so on, I would do uh, two tie downs on each corner. One like this, and then another one from here to the outside of the track. So it'll be two securements like that. Cleaned out this corner right here. Also, I always gotta make sure that the deck is as clean as possible, even if the tracks aren't. Another thing, wherever you put your binders, it can't just be anywhere. So when you start pulling it, the hook is one gonna move, you know? And that's why you always got to find somewhere where it can lock in place. For example, right here is right by the D-ring. So it's going to stop right there. It's not going to move. I can also do it from here. Let's say if the machine was a little more backwards. I could use this pinpoint. Also this one. So there's plenty of points to put it. You just don't want it to, to run. right there Now when we get over there to the delivery address, I'm gonna get a zip tie right now and, and zip tie this, this chain to right here like that. So the chain's not loose because this chain with the vibration on the road, you can just start getting loose and do that. You can just really throw it like that also, but I don't like doing that. I like doing it the, the right way. You know, something professional. I'll show you how I do that right now. Now I just gotta do back of the excavator. This one's already clean, so I don't have to use a bar. I'm gonna have to use it on the other side though. Now 
Now these chains here, they're uh, five footers. I use these for the dozers. If I couldn't get that dozer right now, I'm gonna show you how I uh, secure the dozer. It's a little bit different. And for the dozer, you gotta use chains because the track sits more inside than outside. And obviously the more outside you have a track, the more uh, opportunity you have to just get the binder from here to there. That's how you can tell when you need to work out. You get tired of that quick. Got that corner cleaned up. Man, guys, the stupid GoPro ran out of battery, so I kept on talking and showing you guys stuff, and I didn't even know it wasn't recording. But what I'm doing now, it stopped recording when I was here. I turned on the lights on the truck and I was saying that um, I check all my turn signals. I turned on the strobe lights in the front, make sure all my strobe lights are working. The strobe lights are good. Obviously this is a oversized load. So I had a flag up and it's pretty easy just the flag with a bungee cord i always try to hook them up from the bottom corner somewhere here between the track that way i don't slide and fall off and just bring the bungee all the way to the other side that's how i secure those put that on uh, each corner i also took some of the mud dirt off from the track whatever could uh, potentially fall off the rest of that is like clay so it ain't going nowhere here's the other flag same thing pretty easy simple and just check the check the lights like i said the rear turn signals are working turn on my uh strobe lights strobe lights are good oversized banner And that's pretty much how I uh, load and secure uh, these track hoes. This is a 323 CAD excavator. I would do a 320, a 316, a 312 the same way. Anything bigger than this, 330, 336, 349, you want to use more uh, securements. So instead of one on each corner of the tracks, do two. But that's it right there right now we're gonna hit the cypress wood i might put the gopro somewhere up there to record me getting out of here
just got back to the yard guys that'll be at court today but before i finish the video i want to show you guys some of the sales i have going on on my store there's a pack where you can get this black towel a three pack of decals which here's two and then the the longer decal with the work button up shirt embroidered in the front embroidered in the back for a discounted price also another combo going on it's this one here richardson t800 hat embroidered with the red t800 embroidered towel and the three packet decals but these are the red decals got a bunch of other products on the store like this hat right here the grind will stop safety vest uh trucker bailero decals as you can see i got a few more decals right here you can get the usa pack of trucker stickers i also got the trailero with the mexico flag black and white trailero black and white trucker got a little bit of everything texas trucker sticker here's the small truck the us one so you get two of the small ones and one of the big stickers gr trucking stickers also for any of you guys that are local here in houston if you see me at a truck stop getting fuel if i'm anywhere with my truck ask me hey gr you got some stickers i always carry stickers with me so if you ask for them i'll give you some of the trucker t100 let me show you something else i did i took the stickers that were on the trailer off the ones that go right here that say texas pride and put my t100 logo on there and it looks real good but that's that guys thank you for joining me on another video i'll see you guys on the next one don't forget link will be in the description below and be safe everybody